everyone, it's Jack from Cultaholic, and it's that time of year again. That's right, it's time for WrestleMania Night 1. Lots to talk about from tonight's action. From Seth Rollins versus Logan Paul, John Cena versus Austin Theory, to matches like the women's title match between Charlotte Flair and Rhea Ripley, and that big tag team bout between the Usos, Kevin Owens, and Sami Zayn. All of that and more in this very video. This is what happened at WrestleMania 39 Night 1. Let's go! First of all, Becky G sings America the Beautiful, then we get an opening video package starring Kevin Hart. And after all of that, it's still not time for the wrestling because the show is then officially opened by those two classic BFFs, The Miz and Snoop Doggy Dog. Miz talks about how the pair of them have lots in common and then they run down the card. I'm like, we know the card, Michael. There's just been a two hour pre-show. And then finally, we get the first match of the night, Austin Theory defending his United States Championship against a certain man named John Cena. Cena makes his entrance with a group of Make-A-Wish kids, which is honestly a genuinely heartwarming moment, and that's like the last good thing that happens to John Cena for the duration of the match. That's a slight exaggeration. Cena is in control early on, but then Theory bites him on the ear to get control, and Cena's fuming. Cena does get a few, like, moves in here and there. He gets the STF, but Theory gets out of it. He goes for the FU, or the, sorry, the attitude adjustment, but Theory reverses it into a DDT, but it only gets two. Finally, after a lot of Theory dominating the match, grinding Cena down in slow, methodical heat, fashion, we get the five moves of doom. Cena gets him up for the attitude adjustment, but the referee gets bumped. The STF is locked in, Theory taps out visually, but not officially because the ref's unconscious, and Cena doesn't realize this and celebrates like a damn fool. He's confused, he doesn't know why he hasn't won the match, and turns straight into a low blow from Austin Theory. This is followed by A-Town down, and the US champion retains the belt. I'd say this was a very standard match to start off WrestleMania. Nothing bad happened in it, but it was just very basic. I suppose, you know, Cena's not had the most practice recently. He looked fine in there. But yeah, it almost felt like this could have even been a house show match. They didn't take any risks at all. Next up, from a match that took zero risks to a match that was just pure fun from start to finish, it's the Tag Team Showcase match. To be more specific, the men's half of the Tag Team Showcase duo, this one featuring Braun Strowman and Ricochet taking on the Viking Raiders, Alpha Academy, and the Street Profits. And not just that, but we also had Titus O'Neil on guest commentary. Oorah, oorah! This one all breaks down early on into a big old brawl which the Vikings win before striking a pose instead of, you know, actually trying to pin anybody. Later on, Gable hits a really impressive rolling German suplex on, of all people, Braun Strowman, before Braun does something quite equally as impressive, I guess, heading all the way up top and nailing the biggest splash ever seen. We also get a big terrifying Tower of Doom spot before Braun continues his momentum, doing his big run around the ring, knocking people over kind of thing. He does it twice, but on the second lap, Dawkins absolutely destroys him with a massive pounce. Ricochet hits what I can only describe as a monstrous shooting star press to the outside, but back in the ring, a second shooting star press attempt gets knees from Angelo Dawkins, then Ford flies into the ring with a massive frog splash, and the Street Profits pick up the win. The next match of the night is Seth Rollins versus Logan Paul. Logan gets a big special entrance, zip lining down to the ramp or abseiling down or some sort of wire contraption. I don't know exactly what it was. He heads down to the ring with a giant, suspicious bottle of Prime. Who could it be? Seth Rollins comes out in the words of Cultaholic's own Jack Atkins, dressed like a boiler. But he disrobes and is in more, slightly more normal ring gear, I guess, by Rollins' standards, maybe. He's in control early on, goes for the stomp, but Logan moves out of the way. Logan fights back into the match with a buckshot lariat, then loads up that infamous big right hand and hits Seth in the stomach. Logan then does a bit of a Shelton Benjamin with a very impressive leap to the top rope in a single bound into a moonsault, but misses. But it's still a really impressive feat of athleticism from the YouTube influencer man. Outside they go and Seth stomps Logan's hand on the ring steps. Very wise indeed, because moments later, back in the ring, Logan KOs Seth with that right hand, but it hurts his hand in the process, obviously, so he can't make the cover in time, and by the time he does, Seth kicks out at two. Seth sets up for the stomp, but the prime bottle pulls Logan out of the ring and unmasks to reveal that it's KSI. Oh no, how will 
will Seth ever... Well, actually, it, KSI's involvement is kind of the turning point in this match because from here on out, I have to say, it was an absolute blast. That's no sarcasm at all. They set up Seth for a big splash through the announce table, but Seth pulls KSI in the way and he takes the splash from Logan. It's a very good splash as well. Back in the ring, Seth hits the pedigree. I'm thinking it's over, but Logan kicks out. Not only that, but he almost wins the match with a go to sleep and then a frog splash for a very near fall. But then Seth counters a coast to coast with a super kick and nails the stomp. And finally, that is enough. For three. Seth Rollins beats Logan Paul in, it has to be said, another very impressive outing for Logan. Next up, we have the six-woman tag team match between the face team of Becky Lynch, Lita, and Trish Stratus, and the heel team of Bailey, Dakota Kai, and Io Sky, aka Damage Control. The faces start off hot, but Damage Control dominate the opening stages after a while, grinding Becky down until she makes the hot tag to Lita. The match then falls into a pattern where the heels are back in control, and at one point, actually, I enjoyed this bit, Bailey mocks Trish's taunt on the apron. Bailey's very funny when she wants to be. But the pattern continues with now Lita getting beaten down until she gets the hot tag to Trish, and then she gets her turn to run wild as well. She does her head scissors on the outside, sending Dakota into her two partners in quite a unique spot. Inside, Becky hits the big leg drop and locks in the disarmor, but Bailey breaks it up. The pair then have a nice back and forth with Bailey going for the rose plant, but Becky avoiding it, then Bailey avoiding the manhandle slam, and then getting the rose plant, but Lita breaks up the pinfall just in time. It then all breaks down into a big brawl with everyone hitting their big moves. Trish hits Stratisfaction on Dakota. Bailey hits her with the Bailey to Belly suplex, Trish that is, and then Io steals the show with a huge moonsault onto everyone on the outside. We almost get a double count out, but everyone beats the count back into the ring, and we have a big final brawl. Lita hits a moonsault, Trish hits her signature kick, and then Becky finishes things off with an avalanche manhandle slam on Bailey for the win. This was a nice bout in terms of, I guess, nostalgia and the there were some nice moments here and there. By and large, though, the crowd were pretty quiet for this one, which was a shame, but they woke up towards the end. Next up, it's the grudge match. Father versus son. Ray versus little Dommy Dominic. To hammer home what a bad boy Dominic is, he gets escorted to the ring by the police in handcuffs. There's a pre-match vignette where he's in prison. Uh, he's also wearing attire, entrance attire, that's quite reminiscent of Ray's look at Halloween Havoc, actually. Anyway, Ray gets a special mania entrance as well. He is driven into the arena in a lowrider, driven by Snoop Dogg, who's back. Uh, Eddie's music plays for a little bit, Eddie Guerrero, which is a nice moment before Ray gets his usual entrance music. It's all going well, and then we realize that the match is sponsored by Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Now, nothing against Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Mmm, delicious. But this has to be, honestly, one of the most misplaced sponsor opportunities I can remember in WWE. What is supposed to be a very deeply intense rivalry, and you've got the apron and ringside barricade emblazoned with this bright pink advertising and, like, cinnamon toast and bits of the cereal with emoji faces. Oh, it's just really tonally off. Anyway, Dom's healing it up in this match. At one stage, he goes to the outside, and throws a drink in his own sister's face. But I feel quite bad for Dom in this. He could have won via DQ twice if the ref wasn't so biased in favor of Ray. At one stage, Ray whips Dom with his belt. Ref does nothing. Later on, Dom's own mother slaps him at ringside. And again, the ref doesn't do anything. Judgment Day kind of saunter on out to ringside from the crowd. Dom is getting heat hitting two of the three amigos before Ray slips out and gets the 619, but Judgment Day interfere, allowing Dom to retake control. They head to the outside and Ray is about to get beaten down by the Judgment Day, but Legado del Fantasma run out to even the odds and have a big old brawl. Dom hits the 619 and a frog splash, but Ray kicks out. Dom then distracts the referee by taking off one of the turnbuckle pads before getting out a chain to use on his father, but Bad Bunny, who's been doing guest commentary, gets at ringside and stops Dom in his tracks, gets at ringside. Come on, Jack. He stands up and walks a few feet to ringside, is what I meant. That's all the opportunity Ray needs to turn the tables. He hits the 619 and a big splashy splash and pins his own son, beating him, burying him, not only on the grandest stage of them all, but in the cinnamon toast crunch match as well. Damn it, Ray. Do a favor for once. I don't know. I, I'll be honest. You can probably tell from my tone, I wasn't a big fan of this one. I, I feel like it wasn't like hateful enough for the situation, for the circumstances surrounding the match. And the sponsorship was weird, man. Next up, a real match of two halves with not a lot happening in the first half of this bout, but then it really accelerating and escalating down the stretch. Almost everything I talk about in this little recap is from the second half of the match, I think. 
It's Charlotte Flair defending her SmackDown Women's Championship against Rhea Ripley. There's a very even start and it's, it's you know, it's all back and forth. There's even some trash talk between the two, uh, some ground and pound on the canvas, a bit of a realism sort of edge to this one. But as I mentioned, not a lot of consequence in the opening stages of this match. The story they are telling throughout, though, is that every time Charlotte goes for the figure four or the figure eight, Rhea kicks her away. She's not letting her lock that in because it's how she's lost to Charlotte in the past. The first big spot, I think, pretty much, comes when Rhea goes for the Riptide, but Charlotte counters it into a vicious-looking DDT for two. Uh, Rhea gets revenge later on as Charlotte goes up top for a moonsault, but Rhea pops up after her and hits an avalanche German suplex. Rhea kicks out of natural selection, sidesteps a spear on the outside and Charlotte crashes into the ring steps. Then back inside, Rhea goes for a riptide again, but Charlotte counters it with a German suplex. However, Rhea gets another German of her own slightly afterwards, and it's terrifying. I don't know if it was meant to happen like this, but Charlotte flips all the way over and takes it on her front, and you even see the mark on her nose where she landed on the canvas hard. It looked very nasty. Thankfully, Charlotte was okay to continue. Charlotte hits her big moonsault to the outside and back in, goes for the figure four again, but again, Rhea avoids it, hits the riptide, but it only gets two. The crowd can't believe it, and neither can Rhea. So she locks in the prism lock, but Charlotte makes the ropes. Rhea doesn't want to let go of the hold. The referee makes her, and she takes a big spear. But again, it's only good enough for two. By this point, the crowd are now fully invested in the match, and Charlotte is losing her mind, almost heelishly. They, uh, they trade strikes back and forwards with... As expected, the crowd favoring Rhea despite her being the bad guy in this feud, they really want her to win the title, of course. Charlotte locks in the figure four finally, but it's too close to the corner of the ring and Rhea grabs the ropes. Then they head up top for the finish of the match. Rhea yanking Charlotte into the ring post and Charlotte is limp on the top turnbuckle. Rhea climbs back up after her and nails an avalanche riptide and wins the SmackDown Women's Championship. It's a good moment for Rhea, but for whatever reason, WWE seem almost as intent on focusing on Charlotte outside the ring, doing that whole, you got me kid, with the, the rueful smile and the sarcastic applause and everything, while Rhea's losing her mind, celebrating with the belt in the ring. And really, I think the moment should have been all about Rhea Ripley, but it seemed like WWE were just as interested as demonstrating Charlotte being all sporting and like, oh, you got me on the outside. And I don't really agree with that personally. Next up, oh, it's time for a bonus match, not on the running order. Miz and Snoop Dogg come back out to announce the attendance figures for the night. Miz claims that he sent out an open challenge for the show and nobody responded, which proves that he is the toughest man here because he's the Miz and he's awesome. He's interrupted by the music of Pat McAfee. Pat comes down to the ring and challenges The Miz who says no, he's the host of WrestleMania. He can't just be making matches on the fly. So instead, Snoop Dogg makes the match, Pat is excited, and Miz is distraught. Pat dominates The Miz who halfway through decides, no, I don't fancy this, and tries to leave walking around the ring. But San Francisco 49ers tight end George Kittle jumps the guardrail and drops Miz with a huge clothesline. The ref sees all this. No, no DQ, apparently. Again, this happened in the Ray Dominic match. I'm not, I'm not angry, it's fine. They get Miz back in the ring and Pat boots him in the face to get the win. He celebrates with George Kittle and it's a nice crowd popping fun babyface moment. And finally, the main event of the night for the undisputed tag team titles. It's the Usos defending against Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, who come out, by the way, with a PWG motif on their ring gear, which is very nice to see. A nice touch to their background and all the... It reminds everyone, I guess, of the of all the, the ups and downs and the long journey they've both been on. The Usos are introduced by Lil Uzi Vert, because they're cool and down with the kids, and uh, the match gets underway. Jimmy looks like he's going to start, but he hypes up Jimmy to get in there and start the match against the man he almost sided with, Sami Zayn. Sami gets beaten down for a while, but eventually gets the hot tag to Kev, who runs wild and hits a frog splash for two. Later, a swanton from KO gets knees, and Jimmy dives with a big splash, but again, it's only a near fall. Sami hits a terrifying brain buster on Jay onto the apron, and then Kev hits a big swanton onto Jimmy, but again, it's another near fall. This match was kind of a tale of a series of near falls, with some of them being very convincing and some not so convincing, but I think generally it all meshed together well to create a very dramatic story. 
forward. The Usos isolate Sammy, but he just won't stay down, so they dish out visibly frustrated super kicks, but then Kev gets back in and breaks up the pinfall attempt. There are more super kicks to Sammy, who again kicks out, and I thought at this point the crowd were maybe a little bit lost just at this point in the match because I don't think they truly believed that Sammy was going to lose here, but I guess it was a necessary lull to, to make it all the more impactful when the good guys came back. The Usos go for the 1D, but Kevin breaks it up and Sammy rolls Jay up for a good near fall. However, the action spills to the outside and the Usos slam Owens hard from one announce table through the other. This leaves Sammy on his own for a while and he gets hit with the 1D, but shockingly, he kicks out and commentary do a good job of selling this as the first time that anyone has kicked out of the 1D. Jay berates Sammy and slaps him about and starts forearming him in the face and hits a big uppercut. He then hits the halluva kick, Sammy's own finisher, on him. Oh no! He talks more trash to Zayn, but Sammy's had enough and hits an exploded suplex into the corner. Owens is back on the apron and gets another hot tag. He runs wild, hits a stunner to Jay, who kicks out. And you could say the end of the match begins here with all four guys dragging themselves to their feet and having a big old brawl, which the Usos win with super kicks. They hit a big double splash on Kevin, but he kicks out and keeps the match going. Then Jay is isolated in the ring, and Owens gets the tag to Sammy and everyone goes wild because they know that this is the moment. Sammy hits two halluva kicks. Jimmy runs in to try and save the day and gets intercepted by Kev and hit with a big stunner, leaving Sammy to hit a third halluva kick on Jay and pin him to win the match and those tag belts. The boys have done it. And so concludes the main event of night one of WrestleMania 39. What did you think of the show? What was your favorite match? I think mine was probably the main event. The second half of Charlotte Flair versus Rhea Ripley was really cool in my opinion as well. Bits of Logan versus Seth, very good as well. But your opinion might vary. Let me know what you thought was good, what was bad, what was shocking, what was predictable in that comment section down below. And I'll see you tomorrow to do it all again. That was what happened at WrestleMania Night 1.